are at the Rowan Berry School in Northeast Portland. And with me here is Sarah Leverett from the Oregon Environmental Council, as well as Angela Malloy Murphy, founder and teacher here at the Rowan Berry School. And thanks so much for coming today, April. Oh, thanks for having me. And we are here because the Rowan Berry School has been chosen as an eco-healthy school by the Oregon Environmental Council. And I'm very curious uh, what some of the standards are and uh, why they might be important. So the Eco-Healthy Child Care Program, it's actually, it's, it focuses on child cares as well as schools like Angela's. Um, and it rewards and endorses facilities that are committed to reducing kids' exposure to toxics. Um, and the program works by um, facilities looking at a list of 25 best practice points and if they comply with 20 of those 25 points to reduce kids' exposure to toxics, we endorse and promote them as eco-healthy. Great. Well, I would love to um, take a look at the school here and see how the school has met those uh, standards to be an eco-healthy school. Let's check it out. All right. <laughs> Come right along. This is the entryway, and this is where we take our shoes off. Oh. And why do we do that? Uh, the reason for that is it just doesn't bring contaminants into the school environment. I think it's one of the points on the OEC checklist. Yeah, it is one of the points. Um, it's a great way to keep dust and contaminants out, as well as lead, which is a big issue in Portland. Um, older homes that have been painted with lead will, as they deteriorate, um, generate lead dust. And so as you're trekking around outside, you'll bring that in. And lead, of course, is very harmful to developing brains. So it can actually things. stick to your shoes. Yeah, wow. yeah. Uh -huh. um, and depending on how much lead paint has been used in that area, or if it's in, near a traffic zone, um, you can actually bring in a significant amount. No kidding. Wow, well, that's good to know. I think I'll start doing that at home. All right, let's come on in. All right. This started out as just a really unusable basement and wanting to have a home school my husband helped me he was the contractor and the builder and he helped us build it from the ground up literally and because he has the same values as as myself and we have children of our own he used as many um, natural and non-toxic materials as he could so the paint is low or no VOC, and depending on the room. I noticed you don't have any any wall to wall carpeting either. Yeah, we try to avoid the carpeting because of all the off gassing. The rug that we're sitting on is a wool rug. It's all wool. Yeah. Wonderful. And why, why wool over a regular carpet? The big benefits to wool is that you have there is no off gassing. Um, it's naturally flame retardant. It naturally is antimicrobial, so it it's a cleaner product naturally instead of having to add a lot of stuff to it. It also won't trap, not having the wall-to-wall -wall carpet, it won't trap a lot of the dirt and dust um, and things that get drug in from outside. So when the kids are down on the floor playing, they're not going to have a lot of the uh, particles coming into their lungs. So I'm noticing that these toys, they look like they're all wooden. Is that right? I'm wondering why you might choose wooden over the you know, the conventional, typical plastic toys that you usually see. The thing with these toys is they are an investment to begin with. I hear a lot of people say that they don't feel that they can afford wooden toys for their school or for their home, for their children, but it's, it's an initial investment, but the toys really do last forever. Mm -hmm. If they break, they can be fixed, unlike a lot of times with plastic toys break and it's manufactured, it just goes in the garbage. That's right. And not only is it made with wood and painted with yeah. natural paint, but oh, it's exactly. sealed with beeswax yeah. instead of polyurethane. And it takes a little more maintenance with toys like this. I have some natural sealant to go back and periodically continue to seal it so it doesn't, it's not affected by moisture. But you can smell the beeswax on a lot of these natural toys when you're playing with them. It's really a beautiful smell. I think plastics are thought of as something that can be cleaned, that can be washed and disinfected really easy, easily, and that's mm -hmm. why they are used so much in childcare environments mm -hmm. because they can just be run through the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. But we do wash all of our wood toys. Uh -huh. um, and and how do you what do you wash them with? Well, a little bit of grapefruit seed extract and mm -hmm. just scrub it and then get it right out of the water and let it air dry. 
nice. some things like this do, they just eventually break down. Mm -hmm. Whereas something like this never will. Right. Um, so this is the most plastic we have in the room is for the tactile tub because this stuff just sits in water. Uh -huh. But I'm starting to find more and more um, steel things. And I see this a lot in childcare centers. We've got a ton of plastic for our water play. But I'm finding more and more that there are things we can replace those with. Oh, nice. That aren't plastic at all, that will hold up to the water. What you're looking for with plastics is avoiding number three, number seven, and number six. Um, number three is going to be PVCs, and the ones we're concerned about are the softer PVCs. Mm -hmm. So like a rubber ducky frequently will be number three, and um, will have something called phthalates in it, which is not good for kids. You can identify number three by the soft vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, number seven, hard, clear plastic. Uh -huh. So, it's like in sippy cups, for example. Sippy cups and baby bottles. Um, some of them have them. But same price, same function. You can get ones that are milky or opaque colored that don't have, um, in number seven, it's bisphenol A, which again is increasingly linked to health issues in children. The hardest part is that it's hard to tell which toys are the safer plastics. Mm -hmm. um, because manufacturers aren't required to label it, and mm -hmm. also, depending on where it's from, um, you know, if the toy's made in China, a lot of times all the ingredients, it doesn't even occur to them to include that in the process. Mm -hmm. A lot of toys these days are made with the three or the seven. Some bigger companies are committing to not using bisphenol A or number three. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you, you do have to be aware of it, and it is up to the consumer to really find out. Unfortunately, sometimes that means calling the manufacturer and asking because they aren't labeled, mm -hmm. um, or choosing products that are explicitly labeled. This is my 16th year as a teacher, and I've had plastic dolls the whole time because children love all over them, and they get really germy, mm -hmm. and it's, it's really easy to just sponge those down. And they were the soft, squishy kind, just like what you're talking about. And it's only been in the last couple of years that I've gotten these guys, they are wool. Mm -hmm. And so they actually retain the child's body heat. They, they sure just treat soft. them in a really different way than they treat those plastic dolls. Mm -hmm. And we're able to just sort of sponge bath them and treat them with a lot of care to make sure that they stay clean. They hardly look used at all. I mean, wow. They just treat them very gently. Mm -hmm. Just watching the way children treated those plastic dolls, you know, they ended up outside or thrown down, and they really treat these like treasures because they are. They are obviously handmade by people. Mm -hmm. And I think they watch the way I treat them as well, and mm -hmm. so they, ha they get the sense that it's really something to be revered. Mm -hmm. So, Angela, you spoke about um, using non-toxic cleaners to clean the toys and, and the classrooms. So I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what you have here. Sure. This is the stuff I wanted to show you because it's, it's pretty easy to get access to these things to come across them. This is grapefruit seed extract, and you can get it at a health food store. Um, and you can, if you smell it, it's just, it has, it's just, a, it's a really strong concentrated um, citrus that can be used to disinfect toys or to clean with or to wash dishes with. This is our soap. We just make our own spray soap for the children to use on the table. Uh, this is surface spray. And this is what we use um, to spray the room. It's an all-purpose antibacterial spray that's herbal. And you were talking before about things, Glade-type disinfectants that you plug in the wall or candles that you burn. No, um, they both use chemicals that um, to bind scents that aren't good for especially developing lungs, but also um, they frequently put out small particles that can get deep into lungs and even pass over into your blood, so mm, wow. um, just better wow. not to use them. And this just smells better. <laughs> this is cinnamon and eucalyptus and tea tree oil. And, and another thing people do um, is just boil a pot on their oh, stove nice. with water and apples and cinnamon just to mm. make the whole house smell like, you know, something tasty. And Dr. Bronner is, is for everything. And that's a mostly a Castile soap, is that right? Liquid Castile soap that's natural? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we can use this with a little bit of water to dilute it, not much, just for the children to wash their hands with mm. in the bathroom. And these are the products that we use to seal the toys. And this is just pure liquid beeswax. And it's a little different than just melting down your own beeswax to do it, as we discovered. <laughs> um, it's just formulated in such a way that it's 
nice and liquid that it's going to stay liquid and you can use it to seal any unfinished toy or sand an already finished toy and reseal it with this. And as you mentioned earlier, there are a number of recipes people can make on their own um, using baking soda and vinegar, borax, lemon juice, things like that. So going back to you know what our grandmothers did in cleaning, you can both save money and have a lower toxic cleaning regime. Mm -hmm. chemicals, um, chemicals are used in pretty much everything we do these days. Um, in a childcare facility, art supplies, you know, the smelly markers that you know, smell like orange and blueberry and what have you that I loved and played with as a child, turns out can be an asthma trigger and does interfere with lung development. Um, these are the watercolors that we use. The paint uh, is plant-based or plant-derived. It's not completely derived from plants. There are other brands where the paints are completely from plants. Mm -hmm. This has other elements to it, but it is completely natural. Like the crayons we use are non-toxic, just like any of the crayons you'd get in a grocery store are non-toxic, but the difference is it's made with real beeswax rather than a petroleum-based product. You just actually smell the beeswax as you're coloring with them, and it's just something really subtle. We may associate doing art more with the scented markers you mentioned earlier, the, the sense of our childhood, but they say that smell is the closest link to memory, and when children are doing this, they are setting those patterns, natural smells, as things that smell beautiful and right to them. And then they'll recreate those in, in their patterning when they're buying art supplies for their children. Um, I think Angela's done a really fantastic job. Um, on our checklist, the, our best practices covers everything from non-toxic cleaners to air quality issues. Um, inside and outside the facility, um, playground equipment we make recommendations on. Unfortunately, a lot of wood is treated with something called CCA, which is meant to prevent the wood from rotting or from pests get, from getting in it. Um, but this product or this chemical um, actually leaches out of the wood and it leaches arsenic. So when kids are playing with it, they are playing on um, equipment that is leaching a chemical, which they then get on their hands, and then if they go and eat, they'll ingest the arsenic, which of course is bad for them in a lot of ways. Um, fortunately, there are a lot of great alternatives that don't cost more and um, are just as good for building play structures. Um, in particular, cedar. Um, it's a wood that naturally is rot and pest resistant. It was made for children, so of course it's safe or safe enough. It should be fine. And then around the time we were doing the OEC standards, looking down the checklist, uh, I realized that we had an opportunity to seal it with, with non-toxic sealant. Um, my husband added this element up here for the treehouse and the sandbox, and as it grows and we add wood to it, we just purchased a, a non-toxic sealant, and so now the whole thing has been sealed with that instead. If people have a pest control problem, they'll frequently defer to a toxic uh, pest control. But there's really no need for pesticides in the garden. Um, what we do is plant companion planting. We have some slug catchers here. They, they love to eat the slugs. If we catch the slugs, we'll often go over to the coop and feed it to them. And they'll eat the worms too, but their contribution to the garden is so great that we'll let them get a couple worms if they want to. Their manure is the best stuff you can get. Just makes really rich compost. And they eat our weeds too, if we pick the weeds and feed it to them. We have the bunny manure and the chicken manure that we use, um, it makes a compost tea. And then we have uh, the leftovers from our organic snacks right back there in the corner is our compost bin and we get compost out of that. It tends to make plants that are so healthy that they're more disease resistant to begin with. Nice. And if you get sort of out of the cycle of using, you know, Roundup and the things to, to spray to keep away the pests and just have really, really healthy, rich soil, then you're growing plants generally that you're not gonna need those four anyway. Mm -hmm. So Angela, thank you so much for having us here at the Rowan Berry School. It was great to have you guys. Thanks. It was a lot of fun. And, and Sarah, there's so much to learn. And thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. And I'm April Westfall here with Brain Stew Productions bringing you the tools to be more sustainable today.